Jackson Emery was one of the big stars during uh, the last couple of seasons. He is now semi-retired, we'll say. <laughs> we'll talk about church ball in a minute because you're never quite done playing basketball. But we welcome you inside our True Blue Studios. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You look the same outside of uh, some of this. I know. You know, this is very, <laughs> I was telling Jeremy, you know, this is very unique. I usually don't do this. But yesterday before church, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm just going to mix it up today. And mix then it up. Try it for a couple days, and then my mom and wife yesterday told me, ah, I'll enjoy it for about a day, and then i got to get rid of it. Well, we're taping this, so you'll have it forever. <laughs> there you go. What do you think of this team as you've watched uh, the Cougars play now for a couple of months? Uh, you know, I love it, just because I, I played with all these guys last right. year, with an exception to a couple of the guys, but um, they're fantastic. They play hard. It's a different identity from the past couple of years. We've been very guard-oriented. Now we're, you're seeing a team that's very big guy oriented as far as throwing it into the post and playing off them a little more. Um, kind of back in the days of Trent Playstead, you could say. Right. But uh, anyways, I, they play hard, they play great. Obviously, I think they're still in transition period. Where they just got mad and they lost a lot of key starters. So I think there's still a lot of room for improvement and that's what makes it exciting. Brock Zilstra backed you up last year. Now he's a starting guard, a, a shooter. But set the tied the Marriott Center record the other night, six of six shooting the three. The night before at LMU, he didn't have any points. Uh, the life of a shooter. Uh, what do you think of Brock's game? And then I want to ask you about a, a follow up to that on on the life of a shooter in college basketball. How do you feel Brock's game's developing? I think Brock's doing a terrific job. I think uh, Brock's really wanted this opportunity to show what he's capable of doing. In high school, he's a tremendous shooter. He's a tremendous player. And uh, didn't really get the opportunity the past couple of years. He had to back up uh, you know, me and a couple other guys. Right. And um, I think he learned a lot, and I think he's ready. And he's shown it this year. And I mean, his, he can score. He can flat out score. Um, some of those games, you wish he'd be a little more aggressive. And I think that just comes with experience and playing the game a little more and finding your shot. But uh, when you leave him open, I mean, he proves that he can make you pay. You had some nights where you hit all the shots, and then you had some nights where those shots didn't go in. What is it in the, about this game where a shooter can be red hot in his own gym and go on the road and not come close? Yeah, you know, it's if I could pinpoint it, I would have fixed it back in the day. <laughs> and I think if you could pinpoint it anywhere. But, uh, you know, it's percentages. If you're a 50% shooter, some nights you might shoot 100%, and other nights you might shoot 0%, you know? But, uh, I mean, you look at Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, you, it happens to everyone. It happens to the best of us. And But the, the only thing that doesn't change is a shooter's mentality that, uh, you know, I, I missed the last one, but the next one's going in. And you can't let that predetermine your next shot. You just got to continue to shoot and know that, hey, I missed the last one, but I'm going to hit the next one because I'm a 50% shooter. Let's break down Noah Hartsock for a moment. Last couple of years, his averages have crept up a little bit, but he was always the third or fourth option. Now he's the leading scorer on the team, and his development's been impressive. Oh, Noah's done a terrific job. I mean, Noah is by far one of the best shooters for a, a forward I've ever seen um, in college basketball. And I mean, you kind of look back in the day, I mean, a couple of years ago, Luke Herringote and kind of similar comparisons. But the most impressive thing with Noah this year is I thought he's worked really hard with uh, his post game with his back to the basket. Last year, in the past couple of years, he'd want to be the guy that would face up and shoot those shots. But he's done a terrific job at developing that game where he can have his back to the basket and making a strong move to the basket. Brandon Davies didn't have a great uh, pre-league, but since West Coast Conference play began, he has been that force down low that, that a lot of us thought he would be. Definitely, and uh, the mo I've, I, I still, you know, believe in this, you know, saying I've always said is Brandon's one of the most talented big guys to ever come to BYU. And that's, you know, a very you know, strong statement, but I believe I think his talent level is extremely high, and I think his athleticism, his creativity, everything. But um, I think, you know, Brandon went through a transition period after, you know, the unfortunate events last year where he just had to get mentally back in the game. And, you know, sometimes it takes a little while, and I expected it to take a couple of games. Sometimes it takes longer than you expect, but he's comfortable now. Everything's in the past, and now he's just playing basketball and feeling comfortable and just playing. Well, you said no to Europe. The whole pro scene decided not to do that. I imagine your uh, your church basketball coach happy to have you on the <laughs> squad. Yeah, I, you know, I, I frequently uh, get calls from those in my ward <laughs> asking me to come out and play. I'll but, bet. You know, it, it's you know, it's fun. I played I played in Jimmer's All Stars game. Yep. I played in a, a rec game with you know Mike Hall, uh, Noah's older brother Jeremiah, and you know some of these guys where it's just fun to go play basketball. 
And uh, you know, at the same time, it's hard because you know, it's you know, a lot of people say it was a premature re retirement, but um, I made the best decision for myself and for my family, and hopefully for my career. Um, I guess you could say off the floor, not on yeah. the floor. But uh, you know, that's life. Sometimes you make. Try to make the best decision, you go with it. Boy, pretty good at analyzing. Maybe you should come by here more often. <laughs> I don't know if I can read the, the script as well as you can, though. <laughs> yeah. no, but you got the answers. I have to read stuff, because I don't. <laughs> Jackson, thanks.